Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with the EVS-1000 VOR Mode. In this presentation, we'll show you how to make measurements of VOR stations using Rodian Schwartz EVS-1000 series analyzers. This presentation assumes a basic familiarity with VOR signals and with Rodian Schwartz EVS-1000 series analyzers. If you're unfamiliar with either of these topics, or if you'd like a review, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding VOR, and or getting started with the EVS-1000 general overview before continuing with this presentation. VOR analysis is enabled by software option K2 and provides information on signals from both conventional as well as Doppler VOR stations. These measurements include the derived VOR bearing or radial, various modulation depth measurements, parameters of the FM signal components, distortion and harmonics, and information on the COMID signal. Measurement data can also be recorded for viewing on the EVS or for external analysis. To access VOR analysis mode on the EVS G1000, simply press the Mode Hard key on the front of the instrument and select VOR. If operating the EVS over VNC, press M, and then use the down arrow to scroll through the list of available analysis modes. The first step in VOR analysis is entering the frequency or channel of the VOR station. This can be done either as the absolute frequency in megahertz or as an IKO channel number. Note that the EVS will automatically calculate and display the corresponding value. To change the frequency or channel on the EVSG, press the channel frequency hard key. In VNC mode, use the keyboard shortcut Q to either enter the frequency or the channel. VOR measurements are divided into four different views on the EVS. These are Main, Distortion, ID, and Recording. We'll start by looking at the Main Analysis view. The Main VOR Analysis view is divided into three sections. The Level and Frequency Display, which provides information on the power and frequency of the received signal. The IF Spectrum view, which shows power as a function of frequency and the main numerical results, which can be configured to show various measurements and parameters of the received signal. As mentioned a moment ago, the level and frequency display shows the power and frequency of the input signal, with power shown as an absolute value in dBm, and frequency shown as an offset in Hertz from the nominal or configured VOR frequency. The bar graph shows the overload state, Green means no overload, yellow indicates an approaching overload, and red indicates that overload is occurring. If an overload condition does occur, different messages will appear depending on the type of overload. For example, here both RF and ADC overloads. Regardless of the cause of the overload, the solution is to reduce or attenuate the input level, and this can be done by setting RF attenuation to either normal or low distortion. Please see the EVS-1000 General Overview presentation for more details on configuring RF attenuation. The IF Spectrum Preview provides a plot of power versus frequency, similar to a spectrum analyzer display. The center of the display, or the zero frequency, is the nominal channel frequency, and the frequency range, or span, is set to the measurement bandwidth. The EVS chooses a power range that will display both the peak and the noise simultaneously. The main application of the IF Spectrum Preview is verifying that the measurement settings are appropriate. For example, we can use the IF Spectrum to see if a VOR signal is present, or if there is noise or other types of interference in addition to the VOR signal. Although the EVS automatically chooses the frequency range or span based on the nav -aid type, RF spectrum mode can be used to choose a larger span if needed. This is covered in a separate presentation. Note that if RF spectrum mode is chosen, the current settings, such as channel frequency, are transferred to that mode. The VOR numerical results view includes the derived bearing or radial, various numerical parameters of the VOR signal components, and information on the station's ID code. Bearing is shown in degrees, with green indicating a valid signal. The frequency and modulation for the AM signal components is shown, 
and both subcarrier deviation and reference frequency are given for the FM component. Parameters of the station ID, either in Morse or AM voice modulated, are also displayed. The bearing direction can be toggled between from and to by pressing config and then selecting the desired direction. In the VOR distortion view, the levels of the second through fifth subcarrier harmonics are displayed. These are indicated as K2 through K5, with values given in dB. Distortion measurement results also include subcarrier AM distortion for 60 Hz and distortion at either 1440 or 1500 Hz, depending on the number of antenna segments. Information about IDENT signal parameters can be seen in the ID analysis view. The time since the last received ID is shown, as well as the decoded Morse ID code, and the period or interval between the ID signals. The length and spacing of the dots and dashes in the Morse ID can be seen, along with the modulation depth of the ID signal and the frequency of the ID signal. This should normally be about 1020 Hz. The last view we'll look at is the recording view, which displays and stores VOR measurement data in tabular format. If GPS data is available, this data is also stored with the VOR measurement data. Data is stored with so-called status flags. For example, the V status flag indicates a valid signal, and M would indicate a received Morse identification. Please see the separate presentation, Getting Started with the EVS-1000 Data Recording, for more details and step-by-step -step instructions on logging and exporting measured data. In this presentation, we've covered VOR Analysis Mode, which is enabled by software option EVSGK2. This option performs a wide range of measurements on VOR signals, including the derived bearing, modulation parameters for VOR signal components, various distortion measurements, and analysis of the station identification signal. Additional displays of the received signal level and frequency, as well as a spectrum view, can be used to verify the presence of the VOR signal and or the presence of other signals or noise. All measurement data can also be logged together with GPS time and position information. And finally, configuration of VOR analysis is very easy. Simply enter the VOR frequency either in megahertz or as a standard ICAO channel number. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with EVS-1000 VOR Mode. If you'd like to learn more about the EVS-1000 or other avionics-related topics, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.